at VSU. And he's going to talk to you a little bit today about this exhibition called Way Down and his time spent on the Suwannee River and the photographs he produced documenting his experience. So if you have a round of applause. Um, this is the route that I took and it starts up in Fargo. Fargo, Georgia, which is just outside the swamp. Uh, I figured that if I actually started in the swamp, I'd be in there for five years because I would just fall in love with the scenery in there and never make it out. Um, and I, I traveled all the way down to, uh, I can't remember which nautical marker in the Gulf. Uh, this is my canoe. It's a 16-foot canoe. And this is all the stuff that, that I was carrying with me. I had uh, a 4x5 view camera. I had a medium format camera outfit. I had a full set of scuba gear, two dive tanks, uh, underwater housing, a digital camera set up, food, water, shelter, solar power. Uh, and like, this is where I sat. That's my spot. And the rest of uh, camped on the banks. And this would be my office and my home uh, during the evening. Well, like I said, every day about 2 or 3 o'clock, it would start raining. And uh, so I learned how to throw up these uh, sort of emergency shelters in about a half a minute. Like, I'd pull over and I'd throw up a tarp in a half a minute. And I would sit there and just kind of absorb what was going on because there's really not much else to do, uh, which is a really wonderful experience, quite honestly. Uh, we, we don't do that very much anymore. Just sit and be with the world. Um, uh, the whole time this was going on, uh, I, had a, I had a Facebook page up and running. My wife had made me get a decent smartphone uh, so that I could communicate and be tracked. And, uh, and so and I had my laptop with me and some solar power stuff. So I had a Facebook page set up for my students so that they could see what I was doing the whole time and get an idea of like, what goes into making this kind of work. Um, on this particular day, I looked at the, the radar on my phone, and I was wondering how in the world it wasn't raining on top of me, and so I just threw this up really fast, and uh, and then and then the downpour came, and so this little flood channel went from nice little serene to hey, the water's rising. And, and that's me photographing from inside the jungle hammock, and that's my canoe down there. So uh, this is Big Shoals. You guys know Big Shoals? Yes? No? Maybe it's right around here. You should go to Big Shoals. Okay. How far is Big Shoals from here? 40 miles. 40 miles. Okay. It's the only class 3 rapid in Florida. That's right. only class 3 rapid in Florida. Uh, and there's a photograph of it over there somewhere. There's, uh, this is again looking down Big Shoals. Uh, it's just a really wonderful, beautiful place. And at Big Shoals, you have to, you can go through Big Shoals in your canoe if you want to. I wasn't going to because I had really all the camera gear that I own in the world with me, so I wasn't going to risk it. Uh, so I had to take everything out of my canoe and do what's called a portage. And so I carried all that stuff about 300 yards uh, downstream to get around the rapids and then. Uh, and then I had an empty canoe that I got to tow with me downstream. Um, part of what I was trying to do, and the work's not here for you to see, uh, I wanted to photograph underwater in the springs as well. Uh, they're, they're gorgeous, and I've always wanted to, I've always been fascinated with that place where water and land meet. And so I kind of wanted to take that idea uh, into underwater photography and really be more a, a sort of landscape photography than just pretty pictures of fish or something. A bit more. This is uh, running, running springs. Uh, another shot of running springs. This is manatee spring. This is again at running spring. Um, and this was all new for me. I was like learning how to do photography all over again. Um, you, it's a brand new environment. Uh, I was doing everything wrong that you do as a, a photographer. Like every mistake that I made on land 10, 15 years ago, I was, start, I was doing it all again underwater. And, and so, but 
you know, before I ran out of clear water, I started hitting stuff like this, and I felt like I was really actually getting somewhere. I was starting to do something that I like. Um, it's kind of hard to see in here. But it's just, there's these beautiful little passages and just the smallest amount of water. Um, typically speaking, you know, before this trip, when I went into the landscape, I wanted the pristine landscape. I didn't want people in my images. I wanted to you know, document the space and how. Uh, well, it turned out that there were people there, and I was there, <laughs> and this was a trip that was going on, so uh, they started becoming part of, of my photography, which was really abnormal for me, uh, but I really liked, ultimately. Um, this is just this amazing live oak that, that I found. It's up in Georgia, and uh, it is fantastic. I mean, I was climbing up inside of it, and photographing down all over the place. Um, you know, in, in the environment, I'm, I'm always interested in, for whatever reason, uh, life and death and the regeneration of life. And so we have this cypress tree that's ancient uh, next to that shagbark oak that, that's dying and decaying, and life goes on, and the river's in the background. Uh, this, this too, is, is just over the line up in Georgia. I named this one uh, Metaphysical Slough um, because, it, well, for me, it, you know, part part of this is, you know, I had the skill set that people taught me, which is fantastic. Um, but really, I was just fortunate to be out in these places and happen to have the gear and the skill. Um, you know, and, I, and I wandered into this beautiful slough, and the water here is like maybe that deep. You know, uh, and I mean things like this. It's just that are overwhelming to me. How how beautiful uh, nature, the world is, and, and so I was really just documenting the space and what was really going on in that moment. And in a lot of ways, it's interesting to me because it's not that different than what it was a hundred years ago. You know, um, it's still being used in the same way. We will scan them and print them out that way. But but these are solar gelatin prints, and why I love those. Is they'll be here for my grand. Well, I don't have children. Your grandchildren's grandchildren. <laughs> they will be here. We know these are archival. We assume and we make projected tests and say that inkjet stuff is archival, but no one really knows. We know that a silver gel and a black and white photograph of print will be here for at least 250 years. Okay, and and that to me is, is very precious. Uh, I do like with the smaller ones though that it does make you. If you want to, if you choose to, come up here and engage with it, you know, um, it forces you to come into that little world if you choose.